Mwah. All right, so we're going to open our render settings. Under effect, we're going to go to ambient occlusion. And under contrast, we're going to set this to 30%. There we go. We're going to turn on Evaluate Transparency and under Cache, we're going to enable it. Next under Effect, we're going to go to Global Illumination. Under Preset, we're going to go to Interior Preview High Diffuse Depth. Why interior for doing outdoor lighting? I, I, I have no idea. You, you expect me to know this as if I'm the one giving the tutorial. But we're going to click that. Honestly, I just play around with all these and just go with whichever one looks better. So yeah, Interior Preview, uh, th this one. But then under Samples, we're going to change this to Medium. As far as any other effects you want to add, we're not going to be using anything else, but you can add Add stuff like depth of field or glow if you want to but you know that's up to you so this can't be a very good lighting tutorial if we don't actually have anything to light so let's drop in a set there we go now since this is outdoor lighting it's going to be a little bit different from what i would do for indoor lighting but for this specifically we're going to need four individual lights so we're just going to add those right here our first light is going to be an ambient light the next two are going to be two supporting lights and then we're going to have one main source light oh also make sure you add a sky i just use this sky object right here and then drag on your texture of choice and then under the sky object right click it go to cinema 4d tags and go down to compositing right here where it says scene by gi we're just going to disable that this just makes it to where the global illumination is not going to include the light that the sky is naturally going to give off when it does the lighting calculations so it's not going to mess up the lighting just by changing the colors of whatever this guy is now before i change anything i'm just going to select them all go to basic enable icon color just so i can differentiate them easier but under ambient light what we're going to want to do is change the type to area make sure the shadows on none and then under ambient illumination we're going to turn that on then in the viewport we're just going to take the light Rotate it to where it's facing upwards with the set. We're going to drag it underneath the set. You know, make sure there's nothing parallel to it. Just drag it underneath. And then this part's probably optional. I just do it because it makes me feel better about myself. We're just going to scale it up so it covers most of the whole thing. Now for the color, you're going to want to go with the color of the sky. So if we just take the eyedrop tool and just click on the sky, we will have our color right here and then under intensity we're going to set this to about 25. Next thing we're going to work on is our source light. Now for the sake of this tutorial we're just going to make this lighting be about midday like 2 p.m. so we're going to go for a more warmish e color not too warm though because we don't want this to be sunset but we're going to have the hue around eh, 20 to 30 about there and then the saturation we're just going to have this like just barely anything like 10 basically and then under intensity we're going to change this to 135 percent next under type we're going to change this to spot shadow we're going to change that to area and then we're going to leave ambient illumination alone now in the viewport we're going to want to drag this way above the set make sure you rotate it accurately and then make sure the angle of the light covers the entire thing if you're working with a set that's like way too big to do this part you can just go back to the light settings and change the type to omni and just make sure it's far away enough to where the shadows don't look like they're going in different directions but once you have your light set in place we're going to go back to the source we're going to go to details and under area shape this will basically change the look of the shadows we're going to change this from a rectangle to a sphere this is going to be a little different for you depending on how far away your light is from your set but judging on how far away this actually is i'm just going to set the x y and z values to about a thousand make sure that they're all the same though oh also i don't know if this actually works or not because i'm stupid but if you go under shadow turn the accuracy up to 100 percent and then the minimum samples up to 16 percent that'll hopefully get rid of some of the graininess. Lastly, we're going to look at our two support lights. Now these are going to be roughly the same intensity levels and everything. The only thing that's going to be a little bit different is their color. So the first thing we're going to want to do is make the intensity about 70-ish percent. I'll do 65 actually. And then under shadow, we're going to change this to shadow maps soft. And ambient illumination, we're going to turn that on. Next in our viewport, if we middle click on our mouse, we can see different views of the actual map. So what we're going to want to do is just zoom out, make sure we can see the whole thing, and then move each of these two lights on opposite ends of the map for both view axes. So for the side view, these two lights are on opposite ends of the set, and then and for the front view, we're going to make sure that they are also on opposite ends of each other. So then if you look at it from the top view, you'll see that they're kind of just like diagonal from each other. Now for their colors, this can really depend on you. A lot of lighting is really just up to personal preference and what you think looks better. But I like to keep these two supporting lights relatively close to each other in terms of color so it doesn't throw things off too much. Because really what these two supporting lights do is add a bit more depth to the lighting and make it look a lot less flat. It just adds a little bit more variation to it. So you could really use either the ambient or the 
source light as reference for what these other two colors are going to be. So if we're going to use ambient as a reference, we can just look at what the color is for this. And for the two supporting lights, we're going to make the color close to each end of it. So for supporting light one, we're just going to make the color a little bit towards the left. And then for support two, we're going to make it a little bit towards the right. Same thing if we're going to use the source light for reference. We'll just make one support light a little bit to the left and the next support light a little bit to the right. But again, in this instance, we're going to go with the ambient light. So for the first support light, we're going to make it a little bit towards the purple area and have the saturation about 30-40%. And then with the second support color, we're going to make it a little bit more towards the teal color. You can just reference back and forth with the ambient and the support lights to make sure that they're in equally spaced distance from each other, or equal enough. So if we render this out and wait a little bit, we're going to get something that looks like this. Also, please excuse the texturing on the tree models. I really didn't care that much when I was making the set. I really just made it for the sake of the tutorial. But yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it when it comes to outdoor lighting. It's pretty straightforward, at least compared to other kinds of lighting, which I'm probably going to make another tutorial on. And depending on the scene you're going for, you can really use this method to light any kind of outdoor set, whether it's daytime, sunset, nighttime, or even Mars.